Hello, my name is Dr. Freddy's Garcia, and today we're joined by Dr. Jennifer Illis. Dr. Illis, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. Um, we brought you on to shoot a quick video because you are lead faculty for the clinical approaches approaches to TMD, tempor temporal mandibular dysfunction. So uh, I get to talk to lots of scholars every week, and we get to hear what things they want to start solving better in their patients, and TMD kept coming up repeatedly. So I go to the Professor Carrick and say, who's an expert in TMD and your name came up. So I got to connect with you and you were the lead faculty for this program, which is very exciting. Thank you very much for your contribution to our curriculums. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you, how did you become an expert in this? Dr. Dr. Carrick said, you, you are the doctor for this. And then I got to know you and you are the doctor for this. How did you get to this point? Well, this is a really interesting area for me. I grew up loving chiropractic. I started my, I guess you would call it my clinical stuff uh, in practice, traveling with professional baseball teams and hockey players in Canada. So they suffered with a lot of mild traumatic brain injuries, concussions, and ultimately resulted in some musculoskeletal issues like whiplashes, and then also TMD. And I knew that I really didn't know how to treat it well. I learned in school some ultrasound, maybe some manipulation might help, but we didn't really find that their patients were getting better and we'd have to send them out to dentists or um, specialists in this area. So I started working together with my brother who's an oral surgeon and in the dental area. And he said, yeah, you should take this course. And so I started taking one dental course and one led to another. And then that ended up me taking a actual residency program at the University of Kentucky in this particular area. So I just really had a love of it. I loved reading about different areas in clinical management of the uh, approach to not just treating it through spine or musculoskeletal management, but also through the multifaceted areas, I take a look at the psychosomatic approach. We take a look at chronic pain syndrome, central sensitization syndrome, and how the neurology really plays into this, not just at the joint level, but at the spine level and at the brain level, ultimately. Yeah, so, so it sounds like you were an overnight expert, I guess, huh? That was just, it just <laughs> happened in one night that you became this... <laughs> <laughs> this kind of happened over about almost 20 years now. So, Well, then the, the, the doctors who are registering for this course are lucky to get your 20 years of experience there. Um, so when I, we were started reviewing the curriculum, one of the things that really uh, was surprising to me was how you were teaching all these different models, just like you said, a multifactorial approach to it. And, uh, you know, you're looking at the contributions of gait patterns to TMD. That was new to me. I'm kind of going, holy cow. You were talking about posture in TMD. You were talking about the neurology in TMD. And I was like, this is this is going to be amazing for our, our, our scholars. So what, what are the, all the different areas? Can you give us a short little list of the different ways you're looking at it to solve this condition? Because I don't think a lot of doctors have that perspective that gait and TMD may go hand in hand, right? Right. So I think I also have the ability to see things in a rehabilitative standpoint because I teach technique and rehabilitative medicine in my current profession at a chiropractic institution. So I get to see all the changes and how things work and able to apply them clinically. And something I kept seeing over and over is if somebody has chronic pain syndromes elsewhere in the body, they're more likely to develop this problem. And not only just like gait abnormalities, we see a lot of autoimmune dysfunctions giant cell arteritis, fibromyalgia, scleroderma. Mm -hmm. These conditions are actually showing up to be more prevalent with TMD, um, TMD-like pain, we'll call it. So I think what we do is we take a global approach looking at gait, looking at stability at the feet, the intrinsic foot muscle control we talk about, the back and, and pelvic control. We also talk about diaphragmatic breathing and how we actually have evidence to support that if we aren't a diaphragmatic breather, we see more incidence of TMJ problems. Um, so I guess just taking the whole entire body, looking at it as a whole globally, and then starting to break it down regionally, of course, the upper extremities, the cervical spine is utmost important, and then looking segmentally at the jaw joint itself. I think all too often when somebody thinks they're taking a TMJ course, they're taking a course just on the jaw itself, but in this course, we aren't. We're, we're starting with anatomy, going into neurology, and then going into patient history. Social history is very important as well. This is the most utilized joint in our whole entire body, and I think we need and owe it to ourselves to understand how it works and then to how to how to manage these patients, especially those that have chronic pain there. This is very exciting because, 
you know, I, I went to school and I learned a very singular view of helping those types of patients. There was some, some soft tissue, some joint manipulation, but uh, when I hear your model, it sounds beautiful and it sounds more true. So I can't wait to, uh, to learn it myself. And we, the Karakinsu, can't wait to share it with scholars all around the world. Dr. Illis, thank you so much for your time today. Your expertise is going to be welcomed by everybody. For those who want to re register for the Clinical Approaches to TMD program, just visit karakinsu.com. Dr. Illis, thank you for your time, and we'll catch everybody next time. Thank you. Thank you.